How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to clear out tons of extra storage space that you might not have known you had available to you on any PC. Covering all of the latest techniques in which you can utilize to free up tons of extra storage space on your PC alongside clearing out any temporary files, caching files and excess rubbish that is just sitting on your system, slowing it down and taking up valuable storage space. With that there will be some very basic settings and then we'll be diving deeper into some more in-depth options later on in the video. Tired of seeing the activate Windows watermark, built a new PC or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. For the best results, make sure that you follow along with as many of these as possible. Take yourself to the bottom left hand side, click the Windows button, start by typing percent %TEMP% then press enter. We're then going to go all the way from the top, all the way down to the bottom, highlight and select everything, right click, then select the delete icon, or just press delete on your keyboard. For any pop-ups that come up throughout this process, we're going to select do this for all current items and skip on these options. This may come up multiple times. If it does, hit do this for all current items and skip until no more pop-ups come up. Everything we just removed with inside of there was an excess caching file, temp file, just sat on your PC, not being cleared out. That folder isn't automatically cleared either. So if you haven't jumped in there and manually done that yourself, that folder could be holding on to a ton of data to depending on how old your Windows installation is. This time, take yourself down to the bottom left once again. This time, search for run, then press enter. Inside of the small box in the bottom left-hand side, we're going to start off by typing in prefetch, then pressing enter or okay. You may have to give it administrative privileges. Press continue for this. Again, we're gonna go all the way from the top, all the way down to the bottom, right click, or just simply select the delete key on your keyboard. Hit do this for all current items and skip once again. We're then going to repeat the run step by navigating to the bottom, typing run once again, pressing enter. This time, we're going to be removing prefetch and just typing in temp without the percentage signs. Then press OK. Select continue. Once again, highlight everything, then use delete on your keyboard or right click and delete manually. Again, if any pop-ups come up, hit do this for current items and skip. For those of you on relatively decent gaming machines and you're utilizing an AMD Radeon GPU or Nvidia GPU, you could also look to clear out your GPU's cache. If you haven't reinstalled your drivers for a long time, done a clean installation or manually deleted these, you could have tons of caching files and shader files built up for games you no longer play. Some of you may wish to skip this step and that's completely fine, but if you want to go ahead and do this. Easiest way to do it on a Radeon GPU is to right click on your desktop, open the Radeon software panel, take yourself up to the gaming tab at the top, then go down to global graphics. Scroll down towards the bottom, find the advanced section. You'll then be able to see reset shader cache at the bottom. Now, if you do perform this on an AMD Radeon GPU, the first time you boot back into any games in which you play, you will more than likely run into stuttering as the shaders compile. This will go away after a few matches. This isn't going to be a permanent thing. It's just something that happens with many Radeon GPUs. It's completely normal and your performance will iron itself out after a few matches for Nvidia drivers, simply take yourself down to the bottom to your file explorer, then type percent app data percent. That's completed, take yourself up to the navigation bar at the top, click this folder. Go inside of the local folder. We're looking for the folder titled just NVIDIA. You'll then be able to find the DX cache and the GL cache. Start by going inside of the DX cache folder, go all the way from the top to the bottom, or utilize Control and A to select all. Right click, then select delete. Go back, go to the GL cache folder, highlight and select all folders with inside of the GL cache folder, right click once again and delete. The next few times you boot some of your favorite games, especially for the first time after doing this, the games could stutter for a little while, that's completely normal after a game or two the stuttering should go away and you should see a decent performance uplift if you did have any corrupt or damaged shaders. Next up for all systems, it's very basic but we can now make use of the Windows disk cleanup tool. For this take yourself to the bottom left hand side then search for disk space cleanup. Inside of the drop down menu you'll find all drives which are installed to your system. We're going to first of all start off with the C drive but by all means you can repeat this step for all other drives in your system. We're going to navigate to the bottom left hand side and go to clean up system files. Select your local disk C drive once again and select continue. Once that's completed, we can then start selecting all of the items we want to remove from the system. Most of you are going to have a Windows update cleanup. This is from old Windows files which are still in your system from previous updates. In nearly all cases, get rid of these. Windows upgrade log files, your DirectX shader caching with inside of here. If you do choose to delete the DirectX shader cache, any games you play after doing that will stutter for the first few matches. It will go away and that's completely normal. Delivery optimization files. Once you've deselected any sections you wish to keep, go down to the bottom, select OK, and then select delete files. Next up, take yourself down to the bottom of your taskbar, find the file explorer and click on this. On the left hand side, go to this PC, then go to your local disk C drive. Scroll down towards the W section with inside of here. Nearly everyone will see a Windows folder and in some cases you could find a folder called windows.all. If at this point you are confident you don't want to roll back any Windows updates, well there's no real need for this file to be set on your PC. By all means, if you would like the option to roll back, do not delete this. Right click on this file if you do have it and simply delete this file. Go ahead and exit out and that's completed. Now 
navigate to the bottom left hand side, type remove, then go to add or remove programs. Inside of this section, I would recommend that you be harsh with your system and start removing programs and applications and games that you no longer need. If the programs or games you're looking to delete are still easily accessible on platforms such as Steam or are widely available across the internet, get them off of your system. They're taking up space and potentially slowing down your system. I no longer play Battlefield 5 on this PC, so I'm going to go to the three dots, then select uninstall. Select uninstall, select yes, and uninstall through Steam. If you're not entirely sure what a certain application does, or the application size isn't particularly big, I would recommend keeping it on your system. Only do this for things you know you don't use and can easily get back in the future if you ever find yourself needing it. With all applications and games removed from your system that you no longer need or want, take yourself down to the bottom to your file explorer once again, this time navigating to this PC. We're going to be identifying large files across the PC, finding out what those files are and making a decision if you want to remove them or delete them quickly and easily. I would highly recommend that you do a quick backup of any really important files. We will be manually selecting each individual file we want to remove from our system, so unless you select something you don't want to delete and delete it yourself, you won't run into any issues, but if you're paranoid about that sort of thing, make a quick backup of anything super important. We're first of all going to start off with the local disk C drive, but I would highly recommend repeating this step for all other drives on your system if you're looking to get the most out of this clear storage process. Start with the local disk C drive, then go to the top right hand side to search local disk C drive. We then have two commands available to us. We have size gigantic and size huge. Start with size gigantic. You can have a copy and paste this from the description down below, or simply type this in yourself. Type size colon gigantic. Once completed, go ahead and press enter. This can take a little while depending on how fast your drive is or how full your drive is, so don't panic. Allow this process to complete. Now on the system on which I'm recording on, it's a relatively lightweight system and there are not a ton of files. The only gigantic sized files which it's come back with is a Windows 10 ISO I have downloaded in my download section. For you, there is more than likely going to be a ton of files under size gigantic, especially if your Windows installation is over a few years old. Go through any of these files, anything that sticks out to you that you know you don't need, go ahead and delete. If they are video files, make sure that you double click on them and make a decision if you want to keep that file or delete it. If you're not entirely sure where a specific file is or you would like to investigate the file further, simply right click on the file you would like to look into, then select open file location. It will take you directly to where that file is installed. I no longer need this Windows 10 ISO on my system, so I'm actually going to go ahead, right click and remove this. Repeating the same step on my other PC, you're able to see a few more files. In many cases, especially for those of you that have games installed, you'll more than likely find these random files that are very large in size. When you hover over the file itself, you'll more than likely find that it's installed inside of a Steam directory or EA Games or a different game launcher. Hovering over this, you can see that it's actually an Apex Legend pack file, which is necessary for the game. If you delete these files, you will more than likely have to completely uninstall the game or do a repair installation on the game next time you go to play it. So do be careful with these files. But if you do find any game files with inside of it that you hover over and you realize it's for a game in which you no longer play, well, that's even better. You can just go ahead and delete those files, delete the game from your system and have all of that cleared out. We're going to repeat the exact same step, but this time typing in size huge. Then go ahead and press enter. This search will more than likely take a little bit longer as there's going to be more files that fit underneath the huge category. Before you go ahead and start deleting files, be very careful when searching for size huge as there are going to be some system files which are vital with inside of this section. So unless you are 100% sure on what anything is, please do not remove it. For me, I do not need any of the Alienware command center suite stuff installed anymore, so I'm going to highlight these files and delete them. If I scroll up towards the top, I have a ton of extra Steam files with inside of here. These are for Rust. I no longer play Rust on this system, so I'm once again going to be highlighting these files for myself and deleting them. I'm also going to be manually uninstalling the game from the Steam launcher as well. Again, this is completely up to you in what you delete in here. Just use some common sense and only delete things in which you are 100% sure you no longer need on your system or just move them to a different drive. Go to your next drive and repeat the same steps, searching for size gigantic and size huge. Repeat it for the next drive and continue to do this for all drives in your system that you want to clear out that storage data from. Next up, we can utilize built-in Windows tools to find problematic files in the system alongside enabling relatively new features to Windows which can help prevent having your system completely backed up with junk in the future and we can access this by navigating to the bottom left hand side then going to the settings panel. Once inside of here navigate over to system on the left hand side then go to storage. Otherwise go to the bottom left yourself and just simply search for storage. I would then recommend selecting the turn on storage sense option which will bring you to this page. Once inside of here we can start from the top all the way down to the bottom. We already cleared out our apps earlier on in the video so we don't need to go into that section. But moving down to other. The other section is going to show you all of the main folders with inside of your local disk C drive which are taking up the most space. As you can see I'm utilizing 5.2 gig in my documents folder and the Riot Games folder which I have both League of Legends and Valorant installed inside of is taking up 40 gig. If I don't play those games anymore and I wanted to quickly remove them or you want to dive deeper into finding the files which are really large in these folders just simply click on the folder. I no longer need either of these items installed to my system in my documents folder so I'm going to right click and delete those. Repeat this step for as many folders with inside of here that you are sure you no longer need the data for. Once completed go back to the storage button at the top. We're then going to navigate down to the temporary files section. Before you go 
selecting any of these options though, especially with the top section for downloads, this will clear out your downloads folder completely. So please do not click this option without at least checking your downloads folder first, as some people may keep important files in there. Inside of the downloads folder for myself, I don't need any of these files, so I am actually going to be selecting that to be cleared as well, alongside the recycling bin. It will then give you a rundown of how much space you're going to be freeing up from selecting these options in the top of your screen. Then go ahead to remove files. Once completed, go back to the storage button at the top once again. Next up, we're going to be navigating down to the storage sense option, which is relatively new for Windows. For my recommendation, I would select the storage sense option to go inside of this. I would then recommend enabling the top option, then also enabling the automatic user content cleanup. You then have the options to configure storage sense. You can have storage sense run every day, every week, every month, or just when storage space is low. I personally like to have this run every month. Underneath this, the files that storage sense detects and deletes from your system will be moved over to your recycling bin, and you can then have them automatically deleted from your recycling bin in a set amount of days. For me, I'm going to be changing this to 14, but you can keep that at anything you wish to. This option at the bottom is really handy if you do use your downloads folder as an actual downloads folder and not just a place to store excess rubbish on your system. And a great thing about the option at the bottom here is it only deletes files that haven't been opened in that amount of days. I'm going to be going with 14. And if you want to quickly run storage sense now, go to the bottom, select the option. Once completed, take yourself up to the storage button once again. We're then going to navigate down to the advanced storage settings. Windows has made it really easy to customize where new files are saved to, to be able to find more information regarding your disks and the volumes inside of the disks and other advanced storage settings inside of these panels. You can feel free to use these in your own time, but this is a great place where you can further customize your system. One of my favorite options with inside of it is definitely the where new content is saved section. You can have new photos and videos automatically saved to different drives and locations, new documents, and it's just really easy and handy to be able to change these settings with instead of a nice UI like this, and it's a great option. With all of that completed and out of the way, before we close out of this video, help identify other files in your system and keep on top of your system maintenance whilst clearing storage space. First up is quite an old program, but it's still solid, is Windurstat. Google Windurstat. Once inside of it, scroll down to either the official website. Once download is completed, go ahead and double click the application, select yes, select next once again, and run the application. You'll be brought into this screen to select the drives in which you want to do a further scan of. If you want to do all files, select all files. Otherwise, select individual drives and select the drive in which you want to scan for. Then select OK. This will then start to scan for large files across your system. Again, this can take a little while depending on how full your drive is and if it's an NVMe, SSD, or hard drive. Once completed, you'll be given this complete rundown at the top alongside a graphical element at the bottom to help you better understand where these large files are on your system. We'll first of all focus at the top. This will give you a descending list starting from highest to lowest of where all of the size is being taken up on your system. My program files x86 folder is using 156.4 gig, which is taking up about 60% of my drive. Riot Games is taking up 36.5 gig. Windows itself is taking up 19.2. On the right hand side, to see what files are actually taking up the most space on your system. For most people that play games on their PCs, these are more than likely going to be the RPF files for most of the games in which you play. But if you do a lot of video editing or have tons of movies downloaded or a lot of local media content, you could find that you have .mp4 files taking up a lot of space in your system. It really depends, but it just gives you a better insight as to how to find these files or give you an idea of where all your storage space is going. Down here at the bottom is going to give you an interesting graphic. You can click on any of these boxes and these are going to be chunks which are taken up on your hard drive or SSD. If you see here towards the bottom, we have these really small chunks. If you click on one of these, it's going to take you to that individual file. It's just a really easy and convenient way to visualize the space which has been taken up on your drive. It's really easy to start going in and start deleting things you have no clue of. Please do not do this. Only use this as a tool to be able to identify where your storage space is being taken up from. Let's say I wanted to investigate further inside of my program files x86 folder. With inside of here, I can see it's Steam that's taking up most of the data, Steam apps, common, and GTA 5. If you've just found a really large file like this and you know that you no longer need it or want it on your system, right click on this, then go down to either delete to recycling bin or completely delete from your system with no way to undo this. I'm 100% sure that this is completely safe to remove from my system, so do make sure you do those checks for yourself before removing any files you're going to remove, then go down and select yes if you're 100% sure. Once again, let me know in that comment section down below how much you were able to remove from your system, and if you have any other tips or tricks you would like to share, let us know in that comment section down below. If you've enjoyed this style of content and want to get more out of your system without spending a penny, consider checking out the videos linked in the description down below, or one of two videos which are on screen now, and I'll see you guys over there.